just a few things. One is um, <clears throat> that it um, has a significant effect on switching people from off to on rather quickly, um, most patients within 15 minutes. And that uh, this responsiveness on this poster uh, has been shown to be maintained over 48 weeks. The initial double blind study that was published in Lancet Neurology this past year uh, showed 12 week data. So this really demonstrated that tolerance doesn't appear to occur at least out to 48 weeks. The other is that um, uh, it's fairly safe. Um, I think most people would be concerned about uh, oral lesions that could occur and, uh, in this uh, long-term 48-week study. Only, uh, I think, uh, about 8% uh, dropped out because of these uh, events. And um, it's very possible for some people that uh, if they just um, hold the drug for a little bit, this is in practice, this isn't in the poster, but in practice, if they were to hold a drug and let the lesions clear, they may be able to restart it again. And I think that's something we have to, you know, uh, see with time experience. The drug was only approved in May of this year and only became available this month. So, um, so we don't really have practice experience with it as of yet. But uh, those are things we'll uh, look at. Well, you know, there's no data uh, comparing the uh, other currently available uh, on-demand drugs, which are subcutaneously injected apomorphine, which has been available for more than 15 years, and um, the inhaled levodopa, which is only available about a year. Uh, my experience with them all is that they're all very, expect very effective in helping abort off times. Um, I think one of the differences with this is that there's no device associated with its use. And, um, you know, I've been an avid user of subcutaneous apomorphine for, for a long time, and, and I think it works great, but um, many people just didn't want to try it because of not wanting to do injections and having trouble with the device. Um, so I think that for many people who refused uh, to use that, the, they may use this. And I think that um, uh, for people who had trouble with the device, they may be very willing to, to do this as well. So um, I think that's a big, that's really a big thing. But um, people have to learn to use this properly too. The, you know, it's a bilayer strip and uh, it's got a buffer on one side and the drug on the other side. And they have to be able to place it in the mouth properly. They can't swallow it. They uh, actually are told not to swallow when they put it into their mouth for two to three minutes, which is hard <laughs> for people to do, you know, if you try to not swallow for two to three minutes. We didn't find that to be a big issue in the study, as long as you know, we sat and explained that. And I think physicians will have to do that. But, um, but I think it'll, it'll turn out to be easier to use than the device-related treatments.